if you just had addition, and if you think about it, numbers, I mean, I, I, no one really knows how numbers arose in human culture. There, there, there's a lot of speculation and theory, and it, it doesn't really help to dwell on that. But it would appear that counting came first, so you could keep track of things. And then adding things together would have been the next innovation. Now, you could just have counting and adding for a very long time before it occurred to you to multiply. If you just had counting and adding, there are no prime numbers. The notion isn't there. It just isn't present. Because to have prime numbers, you have to have the notion of divisibility. Uh, dividing a pile of 24 stones into three piles of eight. Well, that's just multiplication backwards. Three times eight is 24. So you're looking at the answer, 24, and thinking, what times what is that? So if I'm looking at 23 pebbles, what times what is 23? 23 times 1? Well, that's, that doesn't count, because anything times 1 is itself. So it's the fact that nothing times any, that, that no two numbers can multi be multiplied to make 23 in a, in a non-trivial way, which makes 23 prime. So the act of introducing multiplication brings with it the, 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 this scatter of prime numbers. Suddenly, as soon as you have this idea of, of, of counting numbers, this is, this is the, the crucial... Um, innovation. This is what this is where things go a bit weird. That we've we've evolved this um, what I call a cultural operating system, a sort of way of scanning the world, breaking it down into recognisable objects. So, for example, how many people are sitting here in front of me? Well, I have this concept immediately of a person, and I can scan my visual field and I can separate out the various textures and colours and see there's a person, there's a person, there's a person. And I can start counting them. Now, that's fine, that works really well if you're counting your children or your, 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 your um, cattle or pebbles on a beach or whatever you want to count. Um, but at some point, somebody had the idea of counting numbers, of actually taking this sort of thing that's scanning the world and processing it and saying, what happens if we turn that on itself? And so we count how many, th how many, th how many eights make 24? It's not an eight. I mean, you can count rabbits, you can count pebbles, you can count people, but to count eights, so there's only... One eight, surely, I and mean, well, where is it? So you're, 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 it's, it's another level of abstraction that you're counting numbers, and this this led to the partially successful metaphor of feedback. Yeah. So the the idea that um, multiplication introduces this kind of self awareness into number, and I think this was at the point during the week where there was this first spark where um, Conrad picked up on this and kind of operated this kind of displacement on it by by linking it back to this work you made um, in the yeah day. yeah I mean this I mean there were two kind of interesting conversations we agreed on one was the, the, the narcissus thing and the other one was this 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 piece that well, there was a brief clip of it in there which was a it was just the, the thing you've probably all done with a with a microphone and a, and a speaker when you put the microphone near the speaker and you get that feedback system where the the input is fed back into the output, and it's kind of, um, or vice versa, it's going, and it's so, um, and it, you just, you get that high pitch squeal, but you, and you can do the same with a video camera and a monitor, and you get the, you put the monitor up to the thing, and you can basically get to a certain point, you mount the one in front of each other, and then depending on the angle to the monitor, you can actually create a sort of spiral effect, and then you zoom in, and at a certain point, you get to this sort of event horizon, if you like, where you go to a certain point, and it becomes quite sort of shaky, and then it will sort of go into this quite sort of Doctor Who-like kind of sort of gloopy liquid kind of um, place, which is basically a, an input progression of screens within screens within screens. The input's been, the output is being fed back into the input, leading to a really unpredictable, non-linear, dynamical system. But and this 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 actually seems kind of extraordinary when you see it at first. But one thing that I think was a really interesting comparison that's just to do with every our everyday quotidian experience is that every time you look in the mirror and you look into your own eyes and you perceive yourself, you're standing in front of yourself, like, even for the first time as a five-year-old or four-year-old when you have that first conscious moment. It is a, you, the, same for not, the same thing is happening inside you and you're having this where you're perceiving yourself in a mirror and, in, and you're seeing yourself inside your, in your own, in putting, in, you're processing yourself inside your own head and you have a, basically a Russian doll going back in infinity of, your, of yourself of a, on a, on a, I suppose to speak on a smaller and smaller level like inside yourself. So it's got that same kind of fractal, kind of uh, repeating kind of thing to this sort of notional idea of, of this infinite point. And it's sort of, um, I don't know, you can do it with animals and cats and things and you sort of hope that they're going to have this sort of 
this epiphany thing where they put, but they just don't, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> but with Some a child, what? Some animals do. They do, but they, they, they don't, they, they kind of think it's someone else. No, or they, no, no, no. Okay, well, you've got a smart cat. Okay. Um, but there is, the, with, with children and things, it's one of those sort of first moments, and it's sort of, you can link it in with a lot of theories of the over, uh, origin of consciousness and this and myths of narcissism and things, and mm -hmm. it's quite a... Uh, yeah. So we arrived at this um, notion that multiplica multiplication was the narcissism of number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, one catchphrase. So this is this kind of um, little bit of magic that happened where there was this sudden connection and um, uh, yeah, the displacement of these ideas which we've been talking about, which were really a kind of way to metaphorically model something very abstract. Um, and from this developed this model of um, the way in which number operates on itself as being this kind of um, uh, video, being able to be figured in a video, video feedback. Um, and we began to discuss this this, um, this model, which you can see kind of illustrated um, <coughs> in which you would see uh, two and three side by side in addition, and then you would see three operating on two, so as to multiply it. Um, uh, I mean, it might be helpful to draw it with it, I don't know, yeah. without, without the... Do you want to give your view your, you should you have a place to the, the basic, and this, this was me trying to I mean, we were, we were sort of trying to find some point of contact, so I wasn't pretending this was going to be a work of art, this was just me suggesting a, a, a physical model that we could start from as a, as a sort of point of uh, departure. So we have some sort of object, now we were, we were eating a lot of peanuts this week, so there's peanuts lying around on the table, so peanuts became this sort of um, archetypal unit for the week. But later in the week, Conrad pointed out, well actually the peanut contains two so it, there's, there's a whole. It was quite nice because it was this thing. We were, we were using this as an example of singularity, but then of course the peanut is a is a is a sort of two entities inside its shell. So it's quite yeah. nice. Now, from a pure mathematical point of view, you would just dismiss that. You'd say, well, that's irrelevant. Let's just use a pebble then. But actually, I'm quite interested in this unexpected subversion of these ideas because I'm not a traditional mathematician. But um, so the idea I was trying to make was that if we if we put a camera in front of a peanut and split the signal into two monitors. <coughs> then we see two peanuts. So this is, this is the act of doubling something, this is the act of two. This is, represents two-ness. Anything you put in front of this, you get two of them. And if we put a second camera, and we say split that into three, now we could use any two numbers. We could use uh, 29 and 168, but it would be much more expensive to build. So based on the budget limitations, we limited ourselves to the first two different numbers bigger than one. <laughs> so we have two and three. Um, so these are, these are two monitors, these are three monitors. So it's a pretty straightforward uh, model. We've got a peanut there, you see two peanuts and three peanuts. Two peanuts plus three peanuts equals five peanuts, wow. Um, but the, the innovation is, ah, what happens if we move this camera over here? Just in fact, let's just take this whole thing as a single byte, it's called a complex or an assemblage, and let's just shift it over here. <coughs> now the camera is not looking at peanuts anymore, it's looking at the output of this, it's looking at a pair of peanuts as a single thing. So rather than this represents unity or one, and this, these complexes represent the counting of a certain number of something, we move this, at the moment this is counting three peanuts, if we move it here, it's counting three pairs of peanuts, but the peanuts just representing unity, so effectively it's counting three twos. So what we end up with on the screen is two peanuts here, two peanuts here, two peanuts here, and depending on how you set the camera up, you can even get it so that you see the peanuts are framed, so that even though there are two peanuts here, you see that they're sort of a dual, the, 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 the two-ness of them is, is preserved within the screen. Um, so this represents the simple fact that 2 plus 3 equals 5, and this, equal, this represents the fact that 2 times 3 equals 6. Now, of course, these facts are of no importance whatsoever. Everyone, you know, if that's all we were demonstrating, then um, the Arts Council probably wouldn't be too happy. But <laughs> the point is that this, this is trying to dramatise the, the, the categorical difference between addition where the numbers are playing the same role, and multiplication, 
where this is playing a very different role from this. This is pointing at an actual thing, and this is pointing at a number.